This is Athletes Lives Network exclusive interviews. Today our special guest is Norm Smith, East Chicago Central, class of 1990. 1990. 1990. World class national bodybuilder. What's going on, Norm? Not much, man. How you been? Doing real good. Um, it's a great opportunity to have you on here. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a um, different kind of twist, you know, because you know you didn't play football, no. basketball. You know, you was a you know you a world class body bodybuilder, man. So I want to get your 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 experiences in in that field. Oh, no um, so first question, just to start off, just give us a little early history on you know you growing up in East Chicago. Um, mainly, I was born and raised in East Chicago, Indiana, right in Harborside, uh, right in Guthrie. Uh, another thing I from Guthrie, yeah. 3490 Pennsylvania. Okay, okay. Street. Um, went to Central High School, graduated in 1990. Uh, stayed in here pretty much all my life. Uh, graduated uh, college, went to Purdue University Cal, uh, exercise sciences. Uh, then I went to Kaplan to go get certified as a massage therapist, certified massage therapist. After that, I mean, I just kept on going from there. Just been doing personal training, uh, massage therapy, nutritional assessments. Uh, anything you might need in order to get your body you know, faster, stronger, leaner, um, more body weight on you, want less body weight on you, whatever you might need, rehab. Everything I've done is, is deterred on just getting the body back into a better shape or back to the shape it was before. Gotcha. So at what point of uh, time in your life did, did you realize, hey, you know, I'm not playing football, I don't play basketball, I want, I want to lift weights for a living? Well, what I, what I mainly wanted to do, I wanted to, when I started watching, uh, you know, the old bodybuilding competitions, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Franco Colombo, uh, Sergio Levia, uh, all those guys, I'm like, man, I can get, I can do that too. I can get my body to that development too and show people how to do it. So I started doing it myself at first over at Central. Uh, Coach Peterson helped me out a lot with that. Um, uh, uh, Coach Halterman, you remember, you remember Coach? Coach Tom, yeah. Uh, Roy Richards. All the different coaches, they helped me out in different aspects as far as my eating habits, uh, special ways to exercise, how to exercise, what to do um, as far as calorie intake and things like that too. So it really helped me out a lot to get me started. My first bodybuilding competition, uh, I won over here at the high school in 1990. Well, it was it 88, 89, something like that. It was, it was somewhere in that area. Took first place. After since then, I just been, I just love the sport and I love everything about it, the discipline the way you uh, have to push your body past the point where you normally wouldn't take yourself. Just everything about it, man, it just, I just love it. You know, pain, the suffering, everything. Oh, got you, got you, got you. So, um, so, so you said in, when, when, you, when you was in high school, you know, you only won your first competition. At, at that time, did you realize you, you, you had a gift of, of maybe one day being a pro, or was it still a hobby? I had a, I had a pretty much, I really enjoyed the body and everything they did, the way it heals the way it grows, the way it breaks down, the way it fixes itself after an injury, all those different things. I just love the body, period. And I want to try to help people out, especially especially because I didn't know how to train properly, didn't know how to eat properly, um, didn't know how to rehab themselves properly after an injury, whether it's work-related or whatever the case may be. So, I mean, I just love the body, just the way, the way it heals itself, the way it fixes itself. So that's what really got me started into that. Gotcha. I was I was younger and I remember you were working out in Central when they had the gym in in, in the school. Right. At that time, you was much smaller. Um, what phases did you did you you go through with with your your weight to um, get to where where you are now? I, when I first started uh, competing as far as like competition, just working out on a on a more serious basis was when I was in a sophomore in high school. I was about 155, 160 pounds. By the time senior year came, I was about 185. So I was, I thought I was, you know, in my best shape ever, but obviously, you know, you can always push yourself past that point too. Um, everything I've done has been considered bodybuilding, not as far as like weight training or weight lifting and things like that. And once I started getting really serious into it outside of high school, that's when I knew that it's a whole nother world out there. I mean, there's guys that are bigger than me, that's more cut to me, that's faster, stronger, all those things, and I had to train myself to get past that level, to, to be a better person than that next person that's competing. So I just loved everything about it. I just loved every aspect of it. One, one of the big questions that, you know, everybody wanted to find out was that, you know, you was big, big, strong, massive guy. You didn't play football. Was, was there a reason why? Well, the, I think because I was kind of not scared. I was just worried because when I came, I came into the gym one day, real funny story, and 
I started working out, and I saw the guys come back in, and they had injuries. They had this one guy was hobbling on his <laughs> pelvis on crutches. Yeah. The other guy was broke a few fingers. You know, broke his arm. A uh, guy messed his back up. So I was like, mm, it's a little safer over here in the bodybuilding aspect of it. And I really didn't want to injure myself. I wanted to try to get my body developed as much as humanly possible without keep beating it up, then fixing it, beating it up, fixing it. Bodybuilding is a little bit more different. It's, it's more of a contact sport with the football. I just like the aesthetic beauty of, of bodybuilding because it gives you a, a good understanding of, of what the body does and you know, how you can make it develop to the stronger, faster, and you know, all those different aspects of, of, of working out. I, I really didn't like football too much because they wouldn't let me do my bodybuilding competitions, my, my uh, routines. Okay. In the when I first started, the coach was like, you know, uh, yeah, we want you to get started, you know, football. I was like, well, can I do my bodybuilding uh, workouts? He's like, no, you can't do that. You got to do a football routine. I was like, eh, I really don't want to do that. So I kind of kind of took me off a little bit more into the bodybuilding aspect of it. Too, so can can you explain to us real quick, like just the um, difference in a bodybuilding workout and also a football workout? Because I I didn't know it was a, a really a big difference. It's, it's two differences. When a football player does a certain type of a workout, they're doing it for power, for acceleration, for strength. Uh, we do it for the actual physique, the look, uh, the roundness of the, of the muscle, uh, to fatigue it to a certain point, to get it more cut, more defined. The football player is not looking for that. He's not looking to look defined or look cut. He's just looking to run somebody over, to be faster than that next person, that running back, that, you know, that, that halfback, that quarterback is trying to be a little bit more faster with his acceleration, with throwing the ball off before he gets hit by, you know, hit by a lineman or an offensive lineman, is is completely different. It's not. It's more for football is a lot more. It's a physical sport. Ours is just a posing type of a sport. It gives you uh, an idea of how much you can develop the body, the body build. Explain to us um, just your your routine. Like, for example, when, when you know you got a competition in September, for example, okay. um, when do you start training for that competition and then give some of your most memorable moments? Well, you want to give yourself at least three to four months to, comp to get ready for a competition. Depending on what kind it is, um, you have to be very disciplined as far as your eating habits. Eating habits is like 80% of your, of your actual training. Other, others are 20%, obviously. When you're training, you're pushing yourself past the point where you would normally take yourself. You know, you're doing that 15 reps, those 20 reps, uh, slow, con concentrated movements, um, overload principles, a lot of different principles that you can do in order to make your, your body a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. But in order to do that, we put the size on first, put as much muscle tissue as we can on you, not really weight. Um, once you do that, you want to cut it up a little bit, you want to define it. That's when you start doing a lot of cardio, a lot of uh, pulling back on different things that you're eating the carbs, uh, the breads, different types of spaghetti. You can't have a certain amount of spaghetti, a um, certain amount of water intake that you're taking in. It's Everything is de dependent on your diet. If your diet isn't good, I don't care how how your routine is, it's not going to be there for you. You have to do your tanning. Uh, you have to be a certain color because of the lighting. Um, you have to have your posing routine. You have to have a good posing routine. That's just for the audience. Um, Conditioning is a is a real big thing too because if you can't hold your poses, it doesn't matter how good you look, you're not going to be able to show it properly. Um, different ways as far as you know, um, the different types of calories that you're taking in. If you're taking in a certain amount of calories, you have to make sure you're taking in them, make, taking them in at a perfect time. Like if you're taking in 3,500 calories, you have to take in that every single solitary day. You have to train twice a day. You have to do your cardio in the morning. You have to do your cardio in the evening. You have to train your uh, upper body a specific way, your back, shoulders, arms. You have to hit every aspect of your body from your shoulders to your calves. You can't have a weak point because the, the judges, there are six judges that's right in front of you, and they're critiquing you to see if you have you know, good muscle definition, if you have good size, if you have good stage presence, how your, your lighting is, how the color looks, how your posing routine is, how your, um, if your poses flow into the music. If everything is designed to... You have to have a perfect routine, no matter what you do. Uh, your workouts, you have to be on a daily basis. You have to train a specific way, get your rest, massage therapy. Everything is put into it, so you have. It's a, it's a hard, it's a hard work routine I, to do. I, I it's, see. It's pretty, pretty consistent, but you have to. Girlfriends, you can't really. Wow. Have a for like, <laughs> for like three or four months. If you do have a girlfriend, I mean, she has to automatically know that you know, hey. 
can't do certain things. Why is that though? Well, it brings down your testosterone level, depending on the person, okay. and you won't be able to train as hard, and your, your muscles you'll start getting flat, you start being weak on certain days, and you won't be able to train a specific way. You have to train harder and harder and harder each day, all the way up to the day of the competition. After about a week before the competition, that's when you start doing your dieting. Your water intake has to be taken down a lot. Um, your posing has to be perfect. Um, your tanning has to be perfect. Um, your conditioning as far as your posing routines, yes, you should be able to hold your poses at a certain time length too to make sure that everything that everything is being shown from your calves all the way up to your to your neck. So it's a it's a hard So I'm gonna cut you off, but so you mean when so when you have sexual intercourse it it flattens your body for for, for, for anybody? Well it does two things. It weakens you, it brings your testosterone level down so you can't lift the weight as much weight as you did the day before. Okay. And secondly it does flatten your muscles because you have full muscles when you you've taken everything out of you because when you have sex you're gonna have fun with it you know and everything you're gonna have a long routine with that and you're drained out the next day you gotta work out hard especially if you have a coach the coach is gonna be like you know hey come on let's go let's, let's put some more weight on here you can't do it the night before your girl beats you up yeah you know so there's nothing you can do about it you have to stay away from that and okay. all the way up to the after the after the competition you can do whatever you want you eat your you know, eat whatever you want to eat to a certain degree, you know, be with your girl or your wife or whatever the case may be, but you have to be consistent with it. You can't do it right if you're not going to do it that way. Don't even waste your time to do it. Give us the, um, the, 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 the demeanor and attitude of, of your of your competitors when you're behind the, the curtains and, and, and y'all getting ready to go. Everybody's tired. Everybody's fatigued. Everybody's carb depleted. Um, everybody is water depleted. They're just, they're just laying there sleeping or resting, trying to get ready for just get enough strength to do their posing routine and then get off that stage as quickly as possible. And, wow. And, but everybody watches each other to see how they look. Hey, is this guy you know, as defined as, as I am? You know, it's, it's always just a, kind of a looking around to see, okay, that guy might be good, that guy might be good. So, and we... Like, 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 it's, like hard, it's hard to explain, really. Like, like for example, okay, let's let, let's lose, let's use um, Ronnie Coleman and um, Flex Wheeler for example. You know, Ronnie Coleman always win. You know, when I, when I look at the stuff, he, he he has more more awards. What is the difference about his body than Flex Wheeler's body? Uh, Ronnie Coleman, he his body type is completely different. He has a ton of size on. He's a, a really massive, thick bodybuilder. As okay. opposed to Flex, he's a huge guy, but he has he's more defined. He has more shape. He has more symmetrical uh, shaping as far as his roundness, uh, smaller waist, uh, broader shoulders, small uh, wrists, things like that, small joints that give him that illusion of having a huge muscular symmetrical body. Gotcha. Uh, Ronnie Coleman, he has the same thing, but he has a lot more mass on him. And there's different things that, just his genetics, you know, his, his legs are humongous. He has, you know, small calves, which is not good. No. But, but Flex Wheeler, he has bigger calves, he has more rounded shape, but it's just that Ronnie Comey, he's a bigger guy. He's a, a lot more massive. He overpowers a lot of his competitors. Is bodybuilding um, safe on, on your health? Because as, as you were saying, and I didn't know, I didn't realize, you, know, you said guys are, are tired, you're ready to get it over with. So, you know, you, you, you train your body for this great uh, opportunity to, to win an award so you, you can advance, but like you said, er, er, everybody's in the back tired. Well, it's, it's, it's probably well, the day of the competition. You look in fantastic shape, but you're probably the most, the weakest guy that you can. I mean, that's the weakest you can possibly be, is because you're deplete, you're depleted of water, you're depleted of food. Um, you've trained so hard that your body, you have very small, a low amount of body fat on you. So you're almost, it feels like you're almost dying, in a sense. Wow. You know. Um, but once they get done with that, they have to put the water back in their system, put the, the calories back on, and have to put a little bit more fat on them too. They can't stay like that for, for a long period of time because it's very hard to maintain that. Gotcha. Are you subjected to get like cramps? Oh yeah. It depends on how you're training. If your eating habits are good, you shouldn't, be able, you shouldn't have to cramp, but most people do. Most people do cramp. It just depends on your potassium levels, your niacin, calcium, different other things that you have in or you have put in your put in your system. You have to have those in there in order to do it.